Do we have the reading of statement of adequate notice? Yes. Public notice of this meeting pursuant to the Open Public Meeting Act has been given as follows. By advertising in the Browning County Times and the Courier Post on September 9, 2021, posting notice on school bulletin boards and main entrances on September 9, 2021, posting the notice electronically on the district website on October 5, 2021, by filing written notice with the clerk of Delanco Township on September 9, 2021. Thank you. May I have a motion to approve the minutes of September 8th, 2021 regular meeting, September 15th, 2021 regular meeting, Exhibit D. So uh, Bob, I see you as a motion. Who is second? I'll second Cameron. Thank you, Cameron. Any questions or comments? Okay, all in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Abstain. Motion carries. Thank you. May I have a motion to accept the reports of the board secretary and treasurer for August 2021, which are in agreement. Exhibit E. May I have a motion. So moved. Thank you, Bob. Second, Phil. Thank you, Phil. Questions or comments? All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Abstain? Garmo, abstain. Thank you, Vera. Motion carries. Community liaison reports. Riverside High School. Is there anyone? So, Mrs. Kamenugi, and I'm going to be reaching out to Riverside about this because we haven't heard much about uh, having a high school liaison, but Cameron, I don't know if you have information from the Riverside board about that. I haven't heard anything regarding Riverside's Delango representative, but a, River, a representative for Riverside Student Council to uh, Riverside's board was present at Riverside's meeting last Thursday. So as far as my knowledge pertains, there should still be a representative coming here. All right. So I, I would say if it pleases the board, uh, I would say I would I'll reach out to Riverside and if Cameron also talks to Riverside. I think then we could get a representative here from the high school. I'll have to uh, send Mrs. Hunter an email. That would be yep. great. Thank you. Delanco PTO, is there a representative who would like to say? Hi, I'm here. Wendy Flanagan, Hi. secretary. Um, Delanco PTO. Um, we just recently had a book fair and we sold um, over $5,000 worth of books. So um, we will be getting about half of that back for Scholastic Dollars where we can buy books or other things for the teachers. Um, we did buy some books already for some of the Pearson teachers um, from the book fair itself. And once we get the Scholastic Dollars back, then we will be purchasing some books for um, the Walnut Street teachers for reading um, their reading classes. Also, um, just an FYI, we have decided that we are not going to be holding the holiday auction this year. We feel that it's not right to try to ask for donations from businesses who have been hurting um, recently due to the pandemic. So we're also, we're gonna be looking into um, maybe having um, a 50-50 holiday raffle instead. Um, so we're looking into that um, to kind of replace um, the funds that we would have earned from the holiday auction. Um, we will be sending out um, an email about membership and membership dues. So keep a lookout for that and um, we will ha be having um, another Chick-fil-A night soon. Um, I think the end of October. So we'll be sending out information about that also. And that's about it. Awesome. Thank you so much, Wendy. I appreciate it. Do we have a representative from DISA Recreation and the Township Committee that would like to speak at this time? Hey, Marissa. Matt Son from DISA. Hi, How are you? Uh, good. We are in our soccer season right now. We're about halfway through the season. All the kids are having a great time out on the Field of Dreams. Uh, if we have any parents who are interested in helping out, we're still looking for volunteers for our concession stand at Field of Dreams. Uh, it's two hours on a weeknight or on a 
Saturday on a game day. Uh, if anyone's interested, reach out to me. Um, desperately need the help. Uh, we are working toward uh, figuring out what's going to be happening with a basketball season. We have a Dyson meeting. Our next Dyson meeting is next Tuesday night at the municipal building at eight o'clock. Uh, we're right now it's up in the air because of the facilities. Um, we did submit the facilities request as I'm sure you guys are aware of, and we were given two nights at uh, Pearson. Uh, previous years, we've always had four nights at both schools. So we're trying to see what we could do to make that work. Um, and also we're trying to still see with the league if there's actually gonna be any other teams. Otherwise, we're just gonna try to do some sort of in-house uh, skills and drills clinic. But uh, there'll be more to come on that and you can follow us on our Facebook page and we'll have updates there and we'll be emailed out to all the parents on our email list. Awesome. Thank you. Thank You're you. Welcome. It. Thanks. Um, sorry, can I ask about that? It's Kat saying that. Um, so, uh, sorry, I, I wasn't aware that we, we, so we have offered two nights a week for one school. Is that? We've offered three nights at Pearson. Three nights at Pearson. Okay. But that's not quite enough for the team, Matt? Uh, Joe, I believe we got uh, two nights is what the request. No. Yeah. Okay. We no, I, normally I, I had indicated that there are four nights to choose from and three nights can be chosen. Okay. It might've just been a miscommunication, but uh, even then we're still trying to figure out how we could do that. Cause normally we have the younger ages over at Walnut and the older ages at uh, Pearson school. So we're, 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 it's still a lot up in the air, how we can make that work. And, you know, we expect to have a lot more enrolled this year, especially at the middle school age because of the middle school basketball is canceled. So we expect to, uh, to try to fill in some of those as well. So uh, really just trying to figure out how to juggle this all and see what we could do to salvage some sort of season. Is there uh, anything we can do to get more nights at all? I mean, I know that we're short with, uh, we're short with custodian. Discuss thoroughly. Uh, our facilities team is pushed to the max. Uh, even getting three nights, uh, we, we were at zero at one point. Uh, we're at three now. I think that, and we've also told other groups zero. So it's uh, we, we're we're really hard pressed to have the building usage like we had in the past because of the additional responsibilities as well as the short staff aspect of our facilities team, and they're they're working themselves. I mean, they're, they're working day and night nonstop to make sure the buildings are clean and sanitized, and and they're short staffed. So uh, to add more responsibilities would just not be responsible of us as administrators. Uh, when we met at our working session, you mentioned that you wanted to use some of the funds for additional custodian help. Would that help the situation at all? That could potentially change it, but that would we would only be able to make a change once we're able to move forward with the actual plan for the ARP funds. So we don't want to overpromise and underdeliver when we know that the ARP funds, uh, Steve Burns is still working on some aspects of that and wants to share more with the board at a future date before we submit the application. And when would we have, I guess, that locked down? Steve, that's, that's November, November, November. Yes, that's November, but, but as we know, Joe, they don't, they don't approve these grants. So we're still waiting for grants to be approved from months ago. So, yeah, and also yeah, it's yeah. important to note that the ARP funds, the plan, like the ideas that we're putting in place, a lot of things that we're, we were talking about, you know, prioritizing, bringing in more teachers and all that. Let's say we take that step initially. Well, then when things change uh, and we have a teacher, uh, we may not get that support that we were looking for. I mean, we were talking about the, the grass cutting to support the team, you know, so we have to continually look at what, what the funds uh, can be used for, and we've already done that. Look at how, man, how much money we have, and then make sure we can move forward in a logical way. Because if we, again, I don't, it's, it's like over promising and under delivering, overspending and not having the funds, and then we are in, then we're in hot water when it comes to our budget. Um, and it has to be a, a school hired custodian who does it, like Dyson wouldn't, couldn't bring in their own people to help. Typically, uh, when it comes to our buildings, uh, we, we have no outsourced custodial staff, and we didn't we we actually didn't want to really approach that topic to allow outsourced facility staff to be in the building. 
Mm -hmm. I think it's a, a much bigger topic than just allowing DICE to hire a custodian. I'm just concerned because I know, you know, we've cut so many programs and now DICE is, sounds like it might be in a situation where that's not going to be available to kids either. Um, so I don't know, it'd be great if we could come up with a creative way to try to at least support that if we can't provide our own winter activities. I agree, but if we remember that we were at zero days at one point and now we're offering free, I think we've really made a, a, a pretty big leap in that area. Right, and, and uh, let me just say, we completely appreciate everything that you're giving, but you know, while we could appreciate it, it's still, we still have to juggle it, but we don't wanna yeah. seem unappreciative by any stretch of the imagination. Matt, have you looked into Turner's and Riverside and some other locations that may offer you a, an experience that has a basketball net? I know Turner's was doing some renovations. I don't know if it's something that's available, but I mean, it's local enough that I think that the parents wouldn't be too discouraged in traveling right to Riverside for that. Yeah, we did. Um, we were reaching out to Turner's. I haven't heard back on that yet. Uh, like I said, we're having our board meeting next Tuesday. I'll, hopefully I'll hear back from them. Uh, when we talked to them earlier, they were still doing the renovations. And also, since this is winter, there is no heat in Turner's uh, yeah. on the basketball court. So um, while it'd be great for the kids working out uh, to you know not uh, be sweating to death out there, it'd uh, also be a little chilly. Uh, we do have a request into Riverside and we're trying to work through that. Uh, they told us right now all they would be able to offer us is Sundays is the gyms being used, I guess, uh, during the week for uh, student athletics. So we're, we're trying to juggle everything we've been offered and, and, you know, and possibilities just to try to make something happen here. Yeah, no, I totally get it. I'm just trying to think of all the places that my daughter has been to for basketball, you know. So have we. <laughs> yeah, like I was thinking the Riverton Community Center, that was another one. I, that's a little bit further than probably most yeah. to travel, you know, during the work week. But I know that they had evening hours prior to the pandemic. I don't know what they offer now, but just another idea. I'm just hopeful to, that you'll find something additionally to help support this season. So are we, and you know, we'll keep everyone <laughs> we'll keep everyone up to date. And like I said, we do appreciate uh, what has been offered. It's, it's, it's just trying to make it work. Yeah, no, totally understand. We appreciate and, you. Too. Chris, if I may too. I mean, when we're and, I, and Joe, appreciate you giving us three days. You know, it's a good compromise. That's thank you, but. You know, we're outsourcing our programs and, and like field hockey in Riverside, things like that. Like we're leaning more in Riverside, like in other towns for, you know, things that I, you know, we should try to provide, but I'm glad we have a compromise. All I ask for, we, you know, when Matt finds out more, maybe we could work with it a little bit, to try to get these kids something, um, you know, don't have too much. And with winter coming up and everything with COVID activities would be great for all the kids as we know. Thank you. Yeah, we'll keep, every, we'll keep everyone up to date. And I don't want to get political at all, but, you know, during the township committee meetings, when they when they had the offer to, or the possibility to donate money to the schools to save some of the programs like the middle school basketball, uh, one of the committee people said, you know, we're not in our position to do that. Let, uh, let Dyson or someone try to do these programs for the school. And here we are, we're, you know, we're kind of in a circle. <laughs> no um, Vera Darmo, I'd like to make the suggestion. Um, the lawyer, uh, Marissa had originally said that the lawyer was here because we were going to an, a whole committee structure and we were getting used to it. Um, we've been doing this since July. I think we're pretty much. Wait, Vera, this um, doesn't have anything to pertain in regards to the community liaison reports. Well, I, it's pertaining to DISA because they said they would like their, um, they have their, li their little kids over at Walnut. And I would hate to, but they can't have that. They only have the three days at Pearson. So I would like to suggest that the funds that we are giving to the lawyer, $175 per hour, uh, not counting executive session, it'll reach over $3,000 in total for these, uh, the lawyer at these meetings, which we never used to have a lawyer at meetings. That 3,000 maybe could be used towards paying a custodian for overtime. So we could have some of the little kids get something during the winter months. I hate to see them have nothing. No, I totally agree, Vera. And if we can get everybody in line and following the ethics that we have to follow, we can certainly do that. But you're gonna see literally after student recognition, we're gonna to have to go into executive session to discuss a legal matter that requires an attorney. 
so we can that's, hold that's exactly that. we don't need that and also um actually we i do know today. mr i know mr. No, so i'm going to table this we're done now we're tabling that we do need her today for executive session and we're going to move on and after that with I'm sorry, we're done. Three thousand dollars could be used for this. Thank you, shelter. Vera. That's my comment. Thank you, Vera. I appreciate that. Thank so you, Marissa. We're going to move on to student recognition. Oh, excuse me. I'm going to welcome everybody. I appreciate you coming this evening. I'm looking forward to seeing all the recognition that our students are going to receive today. And in order to do that, I'm going to now hand this over to Mr. Mersinger so that he can start student recognition. Thank you. All right, Mrs. Kamenugi, and thank you very much. And uh, I want to take a moment to welcome all the families here. I saw a lot of smiling faces out there. That's a good thing. Uh, I I actually uh, visited the schools. Uh, to, I visited the schools this week and did walkthroughs of many of the classrooms, not all of them, but it was great to see things happening in the classrooms, smiling faces of the students and the staff members. Uh, you know, we're we're in the middle of October now, and it is good to see that things are up and running that our teachers are uh, comfortable with what they're teaching. I mean, it's, it's just amazing when you come into the classroom, you see a teacher, they're just, they're alive. You know, you see that energy and you see what's happening with the students. It's just awesome. So I, I, that's the kind of things that I'm seeing when I go to the classrooms. And that is, that is in con that's the teachers and students working in conjunction, as well as the families who are supporting these students at home. So. I just wanna take a moment before we recognize the students to thank everybody. Thank the staff members for all the hard work they're putting in. Thank the parents for all the hard work you're putting in because this is a very challenging time for everyone. And thank the students, of course, because uh, we've all been navigating some challenges over the past year and a half. So thank you to everybody. And, and like I said, I just really had a great walkthrough at both buildings uh, over the past couple of days. And I just saw great things from teachers. I didn't have a chance to even provide feedback except say thank you and wave but uh, this is my feedback now that I saw great things in those classrooms. So um, we can move on to student recognition and talk about uh, Pearson students first. So for Pearson students, we have a character trait of the month and that character trait is friendliness. And that's for the month of September. And of course we're in October now, but when we look at um, the students of the month for September, we're always doing the month previous. So without further ado, uh, let's, let's talk about these great students. So in Mrs. Arangio's homeroom, uh, the student selected for friendliness is Anna Lee Tynan. Let's give Anna Lee a big round of applause. Also uh, in Mrs. Crozier's kindergarten class, we have Mackenzie Arnold. Congratulations to Mackenzie. Uh, next, we're gonna move on to first grade in Mrs. Farley's first grade class. We have Daniel Kurtz. Daniel, congratulations. And moving on to the next first grade class, that's Mrs. Weller's class. We have Albany Philot. Albany, congratulations for being selected student of the month. Moving on to second grade, we have Mrs. Le Ms. Lipinski's class and the student selected is Donovan Gonzalez. Congratulations to Donovan. Next uh, for Ms. Mrs. McCann's class, uh, we have Evan Machernik. Congratulations to Evan. All right, moving on to our, our third graders. Uh, we have Mrs. Minimi's class and the student selected is John Marco Diaz. John Marco, congratulations. And next uh, we have Mrs. Fitzwater's third grade class and that the student selected is Sophia Cunha. Sophia, congratulations. Now moving on to fourth grade, we have Mr. Stockton's fourth grade class. And the student selected was Ava Mobley. Congratulations to Ava. Now, Miss, Miss Wallace's fourth grade class, the student selected is Lucas Varga. Congratulations to Lucas. All right. And now, last but not least, we're getting to the fifth graders at Pearson. And we have Mrs. Brendel's fifth grade class. The student selected is Natalie Da Silva. Natalie, congratulations. And finally, uh, we have Mrs. Duckins fifth grade class. The student is Natalie Boyle. Congratulations to Natalie. So that rounds out the entire group of our Pearson students who were selected for friendliness for the month of September. Thank you and congratulations to all those students. 
And also just, just to let everyone know, um, the students aren't just being recognized during the board meeting, they are acknowledged during the school day as well. And at each school, they would receive something different. Uh, I'd, I'd have to look back over my notes, but I know uh, they were talking about certificates being given out. And that's something that we typically did at the board meeting, but that's being done at the school level instead. All right, so we can move on to now Walnut Student Spotlight. So instead of calling it Student of the Month, it's referred to as Student Spotlight. And again, it's the previous month. So we're in October and we look at the students selected for September. So without further ado, uh, let's go down the list here of Walnut students. So what they do is they have a, a category and then the students that are selected for that category. So in the category of writer, uh, the student selected is eighth grader Logan Bellme. Logan, well done. Next category is mathematician and the student selected is Hunter Bilowski, seventh grader, Hunter Bilowski. Congratulations to Hunter. Uh, next, we have artist, and the artist selected is Nicholas Steinman, sixth grader. Nicholas Steinman, congratulations to Nicholas. Uh, for our most conscientious student at Walnut, we have a sixth grader, and I have seen a smiling face here the entire time, and that is Cameron Lilliston. Congratulations to Cameron. And I'm sorry if I don't see everybody. I, keep, I have to keep switching screens as I'm looking at the list and everything. Uh, next, the student that was selected for greatest perseverance is sixth grader Summer Knight. Summer Knight, congratulations to Summer. Next uh, category is Walnut Whiz Kid, and that student is Adeline Varga, sixth grader Adeline Varga. Congratulations to Adeline Varga. Next, the advisory all-star and advisory is a period that they have at Walnut where they talk about SEL topics and activities. SEL stands for social and emotional learning. And the student selected for that is Olivia Stahl. Congratulations to sixth grader, Olivia Stahl. Next, moving on to the next category is scientist and the student selected is Jaden Alexander. Congratulations to Jaden an eighth grader. Well done, Jaden. Athletes, there were two student athletes that were selected, two seventh graders, and those students are Shia Tori and Franco Tapia. Congratulations to Shia and Franco. Uh, next, we have a musician that was selected for Student Spotlight, and that is Ryan Flanagan Jr. It says Jr. here. I didn't, I didn't even know he was a junior until tonight, so or actually till earlier. When That's was... where RJ comes from. There you go. <laughs> RJ, Ryan Jr. <laughs> there you go. Uh, thank you, Mrs. Flanagan. And next uh, we have our dedicated student at Walnut and that is eighth grader Joshua Simon. Congratulations to Joshua. And last but certainly not least, a student who is selected for perfect participation. And I've seen this smiling face the entire time too, sixth grader. Leah Bellin Andrews, congratulations to Leah. So uh, if this is the board, those are our students of the month and student spotlights for our October board meeting being recognized for the month of September. Congratulations. 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 Congratulations, everyone. Uh, okay, at this time, um, I. If you would like to stay, that's wonderful. I know that everybody has other things that they would like to do this evening, get ready for the next day. You're more than welcome to drop off. We are going to divert a smidgen from the agenda and I'm going to make a motion at this time to request to go into a brief executive session to discuss legal matters. And we expect to come back within the next 15 minutes. So I'm thinking like around 745, it won't be too long at all. It could be less than that to be quite honest. It's just something very quick that we need to discuss. May I have a motion? So moved. Thank Second from Phil. Thank you, Phil. Questions or comments? Do we have a link? We're gonna do a breakout room. Oh, a breakout room, I missed that. Yeah. Okay. Yes, sounds good. Mm -hmm. So we haven't used a breakout room before with this, but Albert was showing Steve and me a few weeks ago. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start the breakout room and I'm oh, only really quick, really quick. You have to vote. <laughs> you have it. Oh, yeah, yeah. Vote has to vote. Sorry all, about that. All, 
I, I was at all in favor. So <laughs> I'm all in favor. Aye. 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 Opposed? Abstain? Motion carries. I appreciate it. Thank you, Amy. Um, and Joe, I'm sorry. You may go now. <laughs> Well, we're back. So um, I'll now open this up for public comment on agenda items. Anybody in our public have a comment on an agenda item? I don't think so. I don't see any hands up. So we'll close that. And I will now open this up, or now we'll speak about the superintendent's report. Uh, Mr. Mersinger. Thank you, Mr. Carmen again. You're welcome. Requested to approve the following items A through G under superintendent's report. Okay, it's requesting a motion. Bill, I'll make a motion. Thank you. Sure. Second. Thank you, Bob. Questions or comments? Um, Vera Dharma with a comment. Mm -hmm. um, on the draft agenda, we had a letter H, district goals. Exhibit O. I'm wondering why that was removed. I just noticed it before the meeting. It's actually moved to the end of the meeting. So there's a superintendent's report item. If you scroll down to the end of the agenda before adjournment, but uh, after executive session. Okay. Any other questions or comments? All right. All in favor? Aye. 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 Oh, forgive me. I you should do a roll call vote for this. Okay. Okay. Roll call for superintendent's report. We actually haven't done that before. You have in here. Um, oh, forgive me. Hold on one second. You're accepting enrollments. You're doing. I've read in here that you were accepting the MOE or the MOU with the police. I think that has to be a vote. Uh, with the infor uh, law enforcement officials. Okay. So, yes. So we typically wouldn't do it a roll call for every superintendent's report, but that one being an official document with the police. Yeah. We'll recommend. Okay. Yeah, Absolutely. We'll, we'll take that recommendation. Thank you. Amy. Thank you. Mr. Calgar. Yep. Thank you. I vote yes. Actually, uh, I abstain. I'm going to have to abstain. Ms. Darmo? Yes. Mr. Dovey? Yes. Mr. Cameron Jenkins? Yes. Mr. Phil Jenkins? Yes. Ms. Karen Manugian? Yes. Mr. Vivac? You know what? <laughs> Harry I, don't disappeared. Even, I don't even see Harry on the screen anymore. I don't know what happened. I literally was just like, where'd he go? Oh, no. I'll, I'll put him down as absent for the. For okay. The yeah, we'll do that. Uh, Ms. Tersich Keeley. Oh, I, mean, I skipped Mr. McLaughlin. But Ms. Tersich Keeley? Yeah. And then Mr. McLaughlin. Yes. Okay. Thank you. Motion carries. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Um, instruction and program classifications and placements are the confidential exhibit. Oh. Okay. Sorry. Confidential Exhibit P, Budget and Finance, a motion is requested to approve the following items, A through T. I need a motion. No moved. Thank you, Bob. Second, Second by Phil. Cameron. Thank you, Phil. Questions or comments? This is also a roll call vote. Mr. Calgar. I vote yes. Ms. Darmo? A, B, C, and letter M, no. D through, um, D through L, N through T, yes. Again, A, B, C, and M as in? Mary, Mary. yes. Mary. Mm -hmm. No, and D as in dog through L? And then mm -hmm. N is in Nancy through Tom? Yes. Correct. Thank you. Mr. Dovey? Yes. Mr. Mr. Cameron Jenkins? 
Yes. Mr. Phil Jenkins? Yes. Ms. Karen Nugin? Yes. Mr. Lewak? Can I mark him as absent? Yes, I don't see him on the screen. Mr. McLaughlin? Yes. And Ms. Teresich Keeley? Yes. Thank you. Thank you. Motion carries. Operations and facilities report on maintenance activities, exhibit II. Policy and motion is requested to enter the first reading the following bylaws, policies, and regulations. Policies and regulations from Strauss Esme, Alert 222, Exhibit JJ. I need a motion. So moved. Thank you, Bob. Second. Thank you, Cameron. Questions or comments? I have a question. Mm -hmm. um, I, I went through everything on page 139 and I'm just, I'll read it since no one can like scroll to that right now. It says the board of education prohibits any relative of a board member or the superintendent of schools from being employed in an office or position in the school district board policy 0142.1 nepotism. So if a, if a candidate for school board wins and they happen to have a relative in the district, what happens? It depends on the level of the family. I think it's legally- so they're already, If they're already a staff member on our team, they don't suddenly stop being a, a staff member on our team. What happens is the board member now needs to recuse themselves of certain items when they right. vote, but that staff member wouldn't suddenly lose their job. Okay. That's what I was thinking, because I know too many examples at where I teach. Um, my other question was just more to be informed about something. It was on something called a PCD form, a political contribution disclosure form. It says we have to keep on file when a vendor receives. What line is this? This is, what line page, is this? page 141. Okay. Okay, page 141, and it says, um, when a vendor receives more than $17,500 in a fiscal uh, fiscal year, a PCD form, political contribution disclosure form, shall be required and it has to be kept on file. Along That along with the business registration certificate. So, you know, I've never heard of that. And I'm wondering, do we keep those things on file? Absolutely. And what is, why is that necessary? They're purchasing it. They're, they're they're required by by the purchasing laws. And we do have that on file in Delanco. For those vendors that would qualify, we try to keep tabs on it. Okay. And um, what is the purpose of a PCD form, political contribution disclosure? It's uh, just a form where it's more common for you know big time vendors. Like you know, if you have a small time vendor, generally it's not as big of a deal. But let's pretend you have like for example Parker McKay. Parker McKay may. I, I am not speaking for them. I'm just simply giving them as an example. May give contributions, political contributions to different things, to different organizations and parties. And um, if so, they'd have to disclose that if that was if that was the case before we entered contract with them. But and what so, what do we even do with that information? Like I don't understand why we have to do this. It, it's a law. <laughs> but why do you know? Do you have a sense of why it was um, legislated to be that way? It's been in existence well before. My time. Okay. Um, All yeah. right. Thank you. <laughs> it's one of those laws. It is a yeah. law. Also, um, this is not a new policy. Uh, the policy is just being reworded because NCLB no longer exists. So that, that group of policies is a group of policies that are being edited so that NCLB, No Child Left Behind, is removed because that doesn't really exist and isn't relevant anymore. So that's that there's a group of policies that are being approved that literally are just changed to remove NCLB, anything related to NCLB. Okay, so thanks. The aspect is already in a current policy. It's just worded slightly different uh, in the, the current policy because it talks about NCLB. Okay, thank you. And Stephen, I just want to let you know for the record, Harry has rejoined. Okay, um, next. Do we do a roll call for that? Yes. Oh, no. For policies, right. you can do um, voice vote for policies. Okay. We can do a regular one? Is that what that meant? 
Uh, voice vote, just ask all in favor. Okay, that's what I thought. Okay, it cut out. Um, all, in, all in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Abstain? Motion carries, thank you. Okay, personnel, if you guys would all look at your addendum because that has some updated items. We're going to have a motion that is requested to approve the following line items, A through I. I need a motion. So moved. Second by Phil. Thank you, Bob. Thank you, Phil. Questions or comments? All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Isn't this a roll call vote? Roll call. Roll call. Yeah. Yes, it is. There's been so many tonight. Thank you. <laughs> Mr. Calguire? Yes. Ms. Darmo? Yes. Mr. Dovey? Yes. Mr. Cameron Jenkins? Yes. Mr. Phil Jenkins? Yes. Ms. Cameron Eugene? Yes. Mr. Dilwack? He's gone. No, he's gone again. Oh, no, he's still there. Harry, can you hear us? Yeah, he's good. Hmm. He went on mute. Mr. McLaughlin? Yes. Ms. Teresa Chikili? Yes. Carries, thank you. Board liaison reports. Riverside, Mr. C. Jenkins. Thank you, Marissa. Last Thursday, Riverside met from approximately 6.30 to about 8.30, I'd say. Uh, nothing, nothing significant or major was uh, discussed or passed, but uh, after the meeting, we did have some negotiations training, courtesy of uh, Jesse Adams and another associate of his, and uh, they had home contact. Saturday. So uh, unfortunately, it rained that night. So they did have to have it inside with uh, all the students wearing masks, but uh, they still got to have it. The parades and the floats went well. I went for the uh, floats uh, and the skits at the track and it was, uh, it was successful. Riverside uh, did very well. Great. Thank you. I did see some pictures from homecoming. It looked awesome. So that's great. Indeed. NJSBA, BCSBA, Mr. Litwack. It seems he's frozen. Uh, I'll provide an update just to kind of reiterate what he said last week. Thank I remember you. last week he mentioned the school board's workshop, annual workshop is next Am week. Am I being heard? Oh, oh. There, there you Never are. Mind. I'll let him go. Oh. Well, he's frozen again. Anyhow, you probably you should have received an email, I guess, mm -hmm. was it last night? Or the yeah. night before? I can't remember. Just from the school boards, they're going to send out information involving the um, login instructions for next week. Again, it's not mandatory. We, we purchased a group price because it was the cost of two people attending. Therefore, there was more than two people interested, so it was cheaper to buy the group price. Um, so you should have your login credentials next, you know, soon before that time frame. If you do not get them, feel free to reach out to me, and I'll try to work with the call center to make sure you get them. Steve, I have a Steve, I have a question on that. Um, I have some conflicts with work. Is this something that's recorded? You go back and take a look at and get credit. They, they, I don't know if they give credit, but I, I tell you that they are recording things and all the handouts and everything is usually available online afterwards. So you can still get access and still look at everything after the fact. Okay. That's the one, that's the one nice part of it, about it being virtual. Yeah, Wednesday is a bad day for me. So, but... <laughs> Thank you. Mrs. Tersis Keeley, Township Committee Liaison. Yes, um, there have been two meetings since, well, I did a small update at the working session, but there were some topics that the wider public might be interested in. So I met on 10-4 and 10-18. Um, one thing is that the they brought up the Halloween curfew, which I know kids and parents will be interested in. Um, so the curfew for the town is 9 p.m. on both the 30th and the 31st. And trick or treating ends. I be heard. I have yeah. no idea if I can be heard or. Oh yeah, we can hear you, Harry. Yeah. 
Catherine's in the middle of her liaison report. Yeah. Just we'll let her finish and then we'll table. Yeah, well, the problem I've had is that I can't. I, yeah, the problem is I need to speak up now because I've been listening and I've, it's 26 times that I've been cut out of, I can't hear. I can't hear. It's like a Swiss cheese meeting for me. Yeah. Just you cut might want to try out calling and in everyone from your sounds phone. like they are um, somehow mutating in slow motion. Well, okay. So I did that, but the number doesn't from the last meeting or the number for this meeting isn't in the Zoom system, apparently. I tried that. I've tried everything that I can reasonably do. It's just entirely frustrating to, you know, just be listening for, well, almost an hour now and not really be able to be a rational participant because I can't hear what's being said. It's like um, everyone's speaking like Stephen Hawking in slow motion. That's what I'm hearing, and then I get cut out. And then I don't know how I get back on, it, or you, or Joe, or Steven. I don't know. It's you're actually, you're on now, Harry. It's I mean, like, and uh, it is coming in clear. I'm here, but. I would just, I would say what you want is, let's get this. Uh, yeah, I know, but I'm saying for the first hour. I, I mean, we can't impact that. Unfortunately, that is something that's out of our control. I wish that Same for sure that you right. could be, you know, but unfortunately, this is technology at its finest and at its darndest at times. So this is where we stand. Did you want to um, give a, a, a brief? Yeah, I know. Well, I know. And that's why I. Then and I'll just uh, table. Yeah, that'd be fine. That the. <laughs> Should I proceed? Yeah. yeah, let's do it. Let's do it before you drop out. Yeah, absolutely. Should I proceed? Yes, please. Okay. The county meeting has been changed to the county meeting. The date has been changed from the um, the 14th of December to the 16th of December at Medford Village. Um, and the um, I know I took about 10 minutes and went through all the different programs that will be offered from the um, conference. And there were things that I know that people, if they will take the 10 minutes, that are specific things that specific people on this board are concerned with that are addressed. And it's information, it's current information, and it's information, information from the School Boards Association of whom we are a member and who provide us so we pay to get that service and that is what's happening and then i think december 3rd there's a they'll have a um a statewide meeting the next statewide meeting but that uh, they were even looking for a topic for that meeting in december if anyone from our board has a topic or topics contact me and i'll pass that along um but the, the first hour of the meeting, um, I felt, you know, and I'm staying on and I'll see what happens, but I don't, I have no idea if we are in regular session, if we are in executive session, if we're, we're in, in regular. sidebar session, I, I have no idea. Yeah, no, we're in regular. We voted in, out of the, so, that's now we're, we're back in regular. That's why there's okay. people in this meeting. Right. Okay. So no, that's super helpful, and I absolutely. Yeah. Well, I'm saying he, tr he tried for me, to. I have no idea of what. It's the first hour. Was. Yeah. yeah. Um, I'll watch it on. I'll watch it afterwards to find out what I missed. <laughs> but executive, <laughs> okay. I can't do that. No. 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 Absolutely not. Um, okay. No, we appreciate it. Um, sorry about that, Harry. I hope the the internet connection becomes more stable as the time progresses forward. Catherine, did you want to um, restart your report? Uh, yeah, so uh, there, there's a Halloween curfew for the 30th and the 31st, it's 9 p.m. I guess it normally is like 11 p.m. or something. And then the last trick-or-treaters shouldn't be coming anytime after 8 p.m. So just so you guys know, um, they are in the process of forming the cannabis subcommittee, which Steve McLaughlin will be um, sitting on. 
Um, I also mentioned in our, our working session that they had reached out about some trees available to the school with which we have accepted for for Walnut Street. So thank you, Mr. Mersinger. Um, and then there is a contractor coming to um, quote for the township um, to set them up with technology for hybrid meetings at their building. Um, so I thought that that was interesting. It's going to be you know a fair amount of money, but they budgeted for it this year. Um, and then cleanup day is on Sunday. Was that ten twenty five? Is that Sunday? No, twenty four. Sunday, yeah, Sunday ten twenty four, nine to eleven a.m. And then um, also the township's going to be doing gingerbread houses and carriage rides this year for the holidays. So if anybody has kids who want to make a gingerbread house, uh, you can get in touch with the township building and sign up for one. And it's really cute. My kid wanted to do one last year. So uh, just some fun things for the kids to do this winter. Yeah. No, I remember my, my kids did that. That was a lot of fun. Messy, but fun. Yes. <laughs> the icing can get crazy at times, but it is fun. <laughs> Thank you. Um, is there any old business that we'd like to discuss at this time? Okay. Is there any new business that would like to be discussed at this time? Ms. Mrs. Chairman Ugin, under old business, I just want to take a moment once again to thank oh. everybody for their patience with the COVID-19 situation that we've been handling for the past year and a half. So just so the board and the public are aware, my colleagues and I have been talking and, you know, um, I mentioned the staff earlier. I mean, it's, we are all feeling the, the weight of the world on us to address the situation. And uh, like I said, our staff is doing a fantastic job, whether it's the custodial staff, the teaching staff, other support staff, instructional aides, secretaries, you name it, administrators, we're doing everything we can. And at the same time, you know, I have to admit and be vulnerable that this is, it's frustrating, it is exhausting, it is overwhelming at times to continue to navigate the, the many challenges that we're facing with COVID-19 because the Department of Education is is still is behaving as though it's business as usual, and uh, my association and I have launched a uh, not not a protest or a complaint, but just uh, there have been letters sent saying that we are very concerned that districts are being expected to follow the same protocols and the same norms as though the year is a typical year when uh, we're, we have students and staff members either testing positive or being quarantined every week. Uh, so, I mean, these are things that that are impacting us. So I just want the board to be aware and the public to be aware that our staff members are working very hard. Our students are working hard. Our families, of course, are helping to navigate this as well. But it is certainly not easy and, and we're all getting through it the best we can. Thank you. I have um, one thing for new business. For new business, yes. Um, I just want to say, you know, to everyone out there that an election is coming up, you know, in a couple of weeks, myself and Vince Caligari are not running for a re-election, but for everyone out there, we have four good candidates for the school board who of all four of them that are running would be exceptional choices to the school boards. And, you know, I, I you know, urge everyone to get out, please vote. Although if you do notice when you get your form, the voting for school board is up all the way on the right hand side. So you've got to be aware of that so you don't miss it. And good luck to everyone. That's all. Thank you, Phil. Um, uh, I have just an announcement. I know uh, a couple meetings ago, there was a question about my wife working as a uh, teacher's aide in Edgewater Park. She is leaving Edgewater Park and going to Delran. So if there is anything that comes up that you think is a conflict, please let me know, Joe and you know uh, uh, Steve, that way, uh, you know, I'll be, make sure I abstain on anything concerning uh, any contracts we have with Delran Township. Thank you. To, with tuition, transportation, anything related to Delran, we can give you that heads up. Okay. Yeah, she's again a teacher's aide for second grade, but um, I don't want I don't want there to be any conflicts or questions. We appreciate that. Thank you. Um, Vera Dharma, something for new business. Mm -hmm. um, it's a little related to old business because we've been trying to decide how much money to put in the capital reserve account. So I think that um, the long range facilities plan report that a previous board voted on, or I don't think it, I don't remember voting on that. And last meeting, no one could remember anything that was on that report. 
So can that report be made, be sent to the board before we discuss any more capital reserve costs or how much money to put in capital reserve? Uh, Mr. Mersinger, can that be sent to us? So, so Vera, I have to say that I wholeheartedly agree with you that the board does, should have this document. And after eight, this is my eighth year here, uh, I've had four business administrators with Mr. Burns being the fourth. And the long range facilities plan is, a, it's just a complex issue over the years because it's supposed to be updated. It's supposed to be uploaded. And, and Steve, you probably remember the system was down for years. They didn't update it. They didn't allow districts to even, uh, to even revise their plans and upload them. But I do think they're starting to change that. So I agree with you wholeheartedly that the board should have access to that document. It's just a question of now going back through the records of the four business administrators that we've had, Stephen Burns being the most recent and, and saying, wh where is that document? I, I agree with you. And uh, just an additional- document, It's more of an online platform that, it can, that, that is contained on. Um, there's multiple things in that doc. Like it's, it's not just like a, it's like there's, there's like 10 to 15 seconds. It's not, it's not just like a, I mean, I've, I've never seen a hard copy. It's always, it's always been it's an online thing. Um, well, sure. the, the board voted, I think Mr. Mersinger said the board voted on accepting it. So the board must have seen something to vote on, I would I assume. I don't know if the board voted on it. I, know I, that I think you made that comment in the last uh, meeting. In years past, the board may have voted on amendments. the plan or submitting the plan or certain other things related. But I don't know if the board ever received a copy because like Steve is saying, there's like an online system that that is the long range facilities plan system. So I'm just as curious as you to figure out how can we extract something from that system and provide it to the board so we can all see what this document says. Because I've been searching through folders and, and I quite honestly don't know where it is. And it has to have been kept by one of the previous business administrators, but uh, again, it's, you know, we've had four business. If, if we can't find it, shouldn't we do a new one or we can't, how can we put money away for capital reserve if we don't know the plan to spend Amendments it? Amendments are put in there. Amendments are voted on and those are added to the plan. So at least we should see amendments or whatever but is around. You would have to see an amendment if, if an amendment is, is done. Okay, so my other question is for Ms. Guerin. Ms. Guerin, if, if I were to make an open public record request for um, like the amendments or the long range facility facilities plan is um, does a lawyer have to be consulted on that before uh, that information is released or no? Um, school districts have different, every school district has different practices about what they do. Um, Parker McKay has an expert on the Open Public Records Act and routinely reviews requests that come in some of them big, some of them small, some of them voluminous, some of them a couple pages. If you in your capacity as a private citizen wanted to make an open request, no one can stop you from doing that. Whether the school district elects to consult with council before releasing a document just depends on the nature of your request, how complex it is, and how comfortable they are responding to it without consulting with council. Okay, hope, I hope uh, this document comes to light before we make decisions about capital reserve accounts. And, and I, think, uh, I uh, might Vera, file a request think, on that if I, I, think, I um, I've asked for this a long time ago. Steve and I can work on this and figure out what's going on with this document, even though it is, you know, it's a series of different aspects of the plan that are in a system. But, you know, I, I, did, I have it on my to-do list and I've had it on there for the past few weeks since you've been asking about it uh, since I believe September. So, I do think it's important for the board to see that document. Having said all that though, putting money into capital reserve is important regardless of whether that plan is or isn't you know, provided to the board right now. And, and it's because capital reserve is there in case the, the district needs it for a major project. Now, I know board members have, have given different opinions about what should go into capital reserve. I do, I do support what Steve Burns is, is recommending for this, but I also understand the other opinions that are out there among the board. Yeah, I would like some funds to go. Uh, and again, I, I wanna say this, I want to have possibly some DISA program at Walnut for this, the little kids. 
January and February are cold, depressing months. It gets dark early. And yeah, I'm so happy about the three days at Pearson, but the little kids really need something. They, they're not as independent as the big kids running around the town. So maybe, you know, those, we have to find funds for the, that program, I really hope so. And I was thinking at least um, since the Committee of the Whole is going so well now, um, we can stop paying the lawyer $175 an hour and put some of those funds over towards kids having a program at Walnut. And that's all I'll say about that. I hope somebody supports that. We do support that, Vera. We do. So would you We're agree to do that, that? Moving forward, we focus on building up rather than tearing down. And once we can do that consistent, consistently, we can absolutely move forward in the right direction with what you're saying. We already are. So I think I'm afraid not. I'm afraid. I'm afraid not. So I'm far. afraid not. I'm going to keep saying I'm afraid not until you understand it, but I'm afraid not. Yeah, that's okay. So you're not supporting those young kids. I'm not supporting what you're saying. That's not exactly what I'm saying. I'm not supporting your un misunderstanding of what I just said. That's what I don't support. So now moving forward, our, our distribution's out. All right, I would like to open this up for public comment on a non-agenda item. All right, I will close that. All right, I need a motion. We do need to go into executive session to discuss district goals for the 2021-2022 school year and the superintendent's evaluation for the 2021-2022 school year. I do need a motion. I do believe that we will take, hmm, I, I don't know, what do you think, Joe, like an hour? I hope not. I hope it's not gonna take an hour. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, only, I'm only saying that because these goals have already been approved in the previous year, and if they require extensive discussion, I would be surprised, but uh, if the board would like to discuss thoroughly, of course, we have that option. Let's put it an hour and just see right. it goes, and, and let's hope and pray that we can beat that. Motion. So, oh. Okay, thank you. Phil, we're thinking of returning around 9.15. Let me just get that out. Okay, and now motion by Phil Jenkins. Do we have a second? Second. Thank you, Bob. Do we have any questions or comments? All right, we need a vote. Are we all in favor to go into this executive session? All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Abstain? Motion carries. We now will break out again to another room. Thank all you. All right, breakout rooms are coming. Okay. So at this point in time, we're going to table um, do I have to ask for a motion to table that, um, Amy? You're on mute. I'm sorry. Sorry about that. That's okay. Um, you can just skip it on the agenda. Many boards do that. If you wanted to be very formal about it, you could ask for a formal motion to place it on the table. But then at the next meeting, we need a formal motion to get it off the table. Okay, so then we're just going to just, we're not going to even touch it then. There's no need to go buck wild like that. All right, I appreciate that, thank you. So then at this point in time, I'd like to make a motion to adjourn. Uh, second. second. Ooh, look at that. <laughs> so quick. Phil and Cameron rushing. They, <laughs> Phil and Cameron did it. Phil with a motion, Cameron with a second. Questions or comments? All in favor? Aye. 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 Good night. Uh, nobody opposed, right? Abstain, no. no. Motion carries. Thank you so much, have a wonderful evening. Good night. Have a good night. Good night. Thanks everyone. Good night. Good night.